what level of involvement should the parents have in the whole recruiting process for the kids? So do you want to play college baseball, maybe even earn a scholarship to play? Today we're talking tips and advice for the recruiting process, and I have here with me Ethan Gavon of Keep Playing Baseball, which is a nonprofit organization that helps baseball players navigate this issue. And I'm Doug Bernier with Pro Baseball Insider. So Ethan, thanks for joining us, and uh, thanks for being here today, man. Now, I, I know going through this recruiting process, at times it can be stressful on the, the kids that want to play college baseball, right? That can be stressful on them, but can, it can also be stressful on the parents as well. What level of involvement should the parents have in the whole recruiting process for the kids? Yeah, this is a, a really good question. Um, because if you've never been through this process before um, with another child, I mean, the process has changed a lot since we've been in, in college, even from a few years ago, it's changed a lot. So if I'm a parent and I have never been through this process, there's really no reason why I should understand what the ideal role is or how I can help. So that's why you know, we have a huge parent section that kind of breaks things down. But the best analogy I have for parents' role in the recruiting process is when uh, uh, someone gets their driver's permit, right? So if, if your kid is getting their driver's permit, the only way they can actually learn how to drive is if you let them sit in that driver's seat and drive the car, right? But there's kind of two extremes that you want to avoid. You want to avoid one where you're just kicking your feet up and taking a nap and saying, okay, get us, get us where we're going. Um, and the other one is being overbearing, like, all right, more gas here. Okay, turn here, blinker here, grabbing the ste you know, reaching across and grabbing the steering wheel. Those are kind of the roles you want to avoid. Um, but in teaching your son or daughter how to drive, you know, there's going to be times when you need to step in and say, Hey, you know, the traffic here is a little too heavy for your, for how long you've been driving. Why don't you pull over and I'll walk you through it or, um, you know, subtle reminders. So the role of the parent in the, rec in the recruiting process is to kind of keep the car in between the, the lane lines, so to speak, right? Help your son get to the destination safely. And so the really interesting thing is when we, we survey college coaches at every level every year and you know, they all want the, the player to be the main person in communication throughout the recruiting process. They really want the player to be taking charge. And so it, back to the driver's permit analogy, it's from the outside of the car. So to the college coach, it, it really does look like the player is driving the car, right? But inside the car, we know that's a very different story. There's going to be times, like I said, where as a parent, you need to step in and say, okay, what are you thinking here? Or you need to be in sync or, or give some advice because like you said, the recruiting process, it's up and down, up and down, you know, your dream school contacts you with interest. And then the next day, you know, another dream school is, is saying, no, we don't need a player like you. So there's all these ups and downs. And as a parent, if you can help keep your son kind of even keel, super important. So um, there's really, there's five roles that we talk about. So Number one, it's, it's be an academic counselor. So we know that your son already has an academic counselor, but a lot of times they're, they're overworked, they have too many students, and so they're gonna do their best to, to make sure that you're meeting the eligibility criteria, to make sure you're in the right classes. But as a parent, you're, you're, you know, you're ninth grader when it really starts to count, freshman year of, of high school where your grades are literally just as important as senior year, you know, your son's probably not mature enough to go on the eligibility website and make sure he's in the right classes, right? So if you can be an academic advisor and back up what the counselor's saying, just takes five minutes to double check, but that's five minutes that your son's probably not going to take at, at that stage in his life. So if you can help make sure that they're eligible, be an academic advisor, that's important. So that's number one. Um, financial advisor, make sure you're on the same page financially about what you can spend in the recruiting process and then you know what types of schools you can afford or how much money out of pocket you can afford so really taking the time to sit down and, and let your son know hey it's okay if you express interest in these schools but this is what we're going to have to do to make that happen or 
here's the scholarship you're going to have to get, whether it's baseball, academics, whatever, just making sure that you're on the same page because the worst thing that can happen is you, you get interest or you get an offer from your dream school, but you haven't done the financial legwork to understand that you know, I, I can't afford to go there. I'm going to end up with hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt, let's say. Um, so that's really important. Um, being a source of knowledge. So just investing your time to understand this process. Like I said, there's no reason why you should just understand it without having been through it and without really, you know, putting in the work to research. So go through this process with your son. Be, be someone that he can turn to and with questions and, and know that you've done your homework as well. So that's, that's super important. Um, source of support. So that gets back to what I was saying earlier. It's just that's a huge role because for a, a young teenager, a uh, young adult, there's a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of rejection and just making sure that you stay even keel and you focus on the things that you ultimately control, which is how hard you work, how you do in school, some of those intangible things like communicating with coaches, right? So um, some of those things are really good. And then the last kind of, of the five pieces that we talk about is just be a good teammate and, and have a, make sure everyone's pulling on the same rope, right? So sometimes you get parents and players who are butting heads and it's obvious to coaches that they're not on the same page, right? So um, really taking the time to make sure, hey, we both want the same thing. Um, here's, here's the way it's going to work or here's how we're going to balance this and just having a open line of communication. So the parent role is critical. Um, I know I'm getting a little long winded here, but it's, it's super important because college nowadays, it's a, you know, we're talking about making a, on the low end, I don't know, 70, $80,000 investment in your future. This is a life, lifelong decision at some of the most expensive schools. I mean, we're talking about 200, 300 grand. So would you make, would you let your son invest that money in another way without any guidance? Probably not. But at the same time, you know, this is about your son. This is about their life and what, what's best for them. And college coaches really want to see the players drive that process. I think that's great. You want the parents to empower the kids, teach them along the way. And also, you're right. I think that shows when the kids can get some good guidance and wisdom from their parents, but are able to kind of run with it themselves and be proactive in a responsible manner, that's showing the college coaches that, Hey, this is this is this might be a high character kid. This is a kid that I can trust. When I bring him on campus, I don't have to worry about him. And I would think as a college coach, I would want 25, 30 guys, whatever my team is, I would want a bunch of those guys where I don't have to worry about them, you know? And so I think just that relationship between the parents and the players uh, combined with the college coaches, I think that was great points that you brought up. The next question is. I want to play college baseball. So how do I get a college scholarship? 